How do you quickly fix a suspended Google Ad account? Are you confused about which policy you violated? Can you prevent this from happening again? Today, we'll be answering all of these questions and helping you get your account back online quickly. If you're new here, welcome to the channel. My name is Julian and I work at Blogword, which helps over a million sites with flawless backups. Watch this video till the end and you will never ever have to worry about suspended ad accounts ever again. If you're in a hurry, use the chapters below to navigate to the topics for your convenience. Why is my Google Ad account suspended? The key to getting back your Google Ad account is figuring out what went wrong. Once you have that understanding, you can then move forward and figure out the fix. Here are the most common reasons for a Google Ad suspended account. Number one, your website is hacked. In most cases, malware is the main issue. Your ads, website, landing page or app has malware, redirects, spam or other such infections which are harmful to visitors. Generally, website owners are not aware of the presence of malware. Nevertheless, their AdWords accounts get suspended. Number two, policy violation. There are four major categories of policies that cover Google ad suspensions. Prohibited content. This refers to content that Google does not allow advertisers to promote on their platform, like illegal goods and services, fake or dangerous products, any content that could assist with illegal activities or harm anyone, and discriminatory or hate content. Prohibited practices. This category can broadly be summarized as anything that tries to trick or manipulate users. For example, if there's a cloaking on your websites, if your ads don't match your landing page, or if you're sending your users to a temporary landing page with the true destination being somewhere else. Restricted content and features. Essentially, any content that is not universally legal or accepted or perhaps heavily regulated comes in the restricted content bucket. This includes a lot of subcategories, right from medicines to political content, gambling and adult content, editorial and technical. Of all the categories, the editorial and technical policy is the most subjective and open to interpretation. Basically, Google wants ads that are easy to consume and not annoying, so people won't hate seeing them. Number three, billing issues, such as A, unpaid balance. If your payment didn't go through even once, your account will be suspended. B, abusing promotional codes. It's a policy violation if you use Google Ads promotion codes more than once by mistake or sold them to someone else. C, requesting chargeback. If you had requested your bank to reverse payment, your account will be suspended. D, suspicious payment activity. Google can sometimes think that your credit card is a stolen one and flag your account. They also consider the same billing details for multiple accounts to be suspicious. If you followed the content policies and are absolutely sure that your ads are squeaky clean, then in our experience, malware on your website is the main problem. But don't worry, we will help you fix this. First of all, here's what not to do. Before we begin the recovery process, this is a public service announcement on what not to do. Please trust us when we say that doing any of the following things will only hamper the recovery process. And by hamper, we mean it may risk permanent suspension. These are the top mistakes that we see advertisers make when appealing a Google ad account suspension. Number one, appealing instantly without even trying to figure out what has gone wrong. For some reason, the first instinct is to rush into the appeals process in an effort to get the situation righted immediately. Do not do that. Because because it's not going to be instantaneous. Number two, don't assume that you aren't violating policies. Number three, definitely do not create a second account. Doing so will lead to a permanent ban. Number four, don't get into a confrontation with Google. This will end up badly for you. Be professional in all communications with them. Remember, it is their platform, so take all the shots. Number five, do not submit more than one appeal. A corollary to this is to submit your one appeal after due consideration. Okay, hold on a second. Before we go on, if this video is being helpful for you, please smash that subscribe button because it's free and super motivating for us. You can also comment below with any video topic you want and I will make it happen. All right, let's get back into the video. How to fix Google Ads account suspended issue. Overall, the approach is to be open to changing what needs to be changed and moving forward carefully and professionally. We will walk you through the major steps and help you resolve the most serious and common issue that we've seen, malware on your website. Step number one, review violation carefully. The first place to start is to check the email that Google sent out for clues. The email notification might have some indication of which policy was violated, and that's a good starting point. If the email does not explicitly state what went wrong, they might link to the policy that was violated. That narrows down the field of possibilities considerably. The most common email we've seen is for malicious or deceptive content on the website, and it is also the worst case scenario. If your website has been hacked, then your suspended Google Ads account is only the tip of the iceberg. For now, your website is still active, which means you have access to it. However, if Google Safe Browsing detects malware on your website, you are looking at a blacklist. So it is imperative that you resolve a hacked website on priority. Step number two, 
assess required changes. Scan your WordPress website with Malgus free malware scan. You will then get a definitive answer as to whether or not your website has malware. Malcare finds malware files and scripts in every nook and corner of your website, including files and databases. Online malware scanners like Sukuri Sitecheck are much less effective because they cannot access all the parts in your website and they use an ineffective mechanism to detect malware. The only way to really be sure if your website has been hacked is to use a deep scanner like malware. Next, you should compare information that is on your Google Ads account with the information on your website. Good places to check are the shipping charges, about us page, terms and conditions, and other pages with identification or cost-related information. This information should correlate exactly with what is in your Google Ads account. Has it been updated on the website recently but not in the Ads account? This is an honest oversight, but it could very well be the cause of the suspension. Google views these discrepancies as misrepresentation. Step number three, rectify policy violations. Once you have information about what needs to be changed, you should go ahead and change it. There are three main actions you can take here. Number one, remove malware. Number two, fix content violations. Number three, rectify payment issues. Number one, remove malware. As we said before, malware is the biggest and most worrisome policy violation, and it is not even your fault. Hacks are largely out of your control, although you can take steps to prevent them. Fortunately, this is the one policy violation that does have a one-click solution. The easiest, fastest, and most effective way to clean malware from your website is to install Malcare and then use the auto-clean feature. If you use Malcare to scan your website in the previous step, all you need to do is upgrade and clean. Within minutes, your website will be malware. Malcare gets rid of deceptive content, phishing pages, redirects, and spam content instantly. The cleaner only deletes malicious code, leaving your website and data completely intact. Once you have cleaned your website, you will need to clean the WordPress and browser caches. Caches store old versions of your website in order to speed up loading for site visitors. Therefore, the cached versions may still have malware. Finally, if spam pages were on your website for more than a couple of days, they were definitely indexed by Google. You can check this by using the site search operator in Google and checking the results. The best way to deal with this is to regenerate the sitemap and resubmit it to Google. If you need help to clear caches or regenerate sitemap, comment below and I'll help you out. Number two, fix content issues. Since we don't know exactly what you've put on your site, we can't give you steps to correct misrepresentation, editorial or technical issues. But we can point you in the right direction. Google ad policies are open to interpretation, so do read them carefully. If you need help understanding them, try asking in forums and Reddit groups like AdWords, PPC, and Facebook groups like Google Ads, Google AdWords, Google Ads Experts, etc. You can also look into Quora. If all fails, reach out to Google's search liaison on Twitter. These groups are teeming with active and engaging participants. There is a high chance that someone has experienced the same situation before. So don't worry, you will find an answer there. Number three, rectify payment issues. If you have outstanding news for an ad, you need to clear them. Also, check with your bank to ensure there were no transactions made from your account that could be seen as suspicious. Lastly, check if your old payment method has become invalid. If it has, then add a new method. After you have fixed the issues, it's time to tell Google that your account can be reinstated, which we will cover in the next section. How to submit an appeal for Google Ad Suspension carefully. Okay, you fixed the policy violations, so the last step in the recovery process is to request a review from Google. I'll add a link below to the review form. But before you fill it, please watch this section carefully. We have put together a few tips to help you send the best review request possible. Number one, it is important to note that there is a chance that there is more than one reason for the Google AdWords account suspension. Each reason needs to be individually addressed. Number two, be super careful about the information that you are providing. Any mistakes you make will be seen as false information. Treat the form as a single chance to recover your Google Ad account. Number three, at the end of each form, there is an option called summary of the issue. Here, you need to speak not just about the issue, but most importantly, what steps you took to fix the problem. Number four, you have the option to attach a file to the form. This is an excellent opportunity to provide additional relevant details. For instance, if your website had malware and you removed it, send a report of the cleaned files to Google. Also, don't forget, there are a few extra steps if you clean malware from your site. Basically, in addition to the review request, there are a few other things that you need to do in order to make sure that your request is successful. Once you have submitted a review request, you have to remember to be patient. Sending a flurry of requests or raising support tickets will only make your situation much worse. Each request is manually reviewed by Google, so allow them the time to get back to you. How to prevent Google AdWords account suspension in the future? If your account gets suspended too many times, it will eventually lead to a permanent ban. Malware is the biggest reason for Google suspensions. To protect your website from attacks, you need to install a security plugin with a firewall. The threat landscape is constantly evolving, so it is very hard to keep up with malware manually. 
A security plugin will assist in keeping your site free of deceptive content and spam and you won't have to go through this whole rigmarole again. Balcare has a powerful free firewall with its free scan, so we can recommend using that itself. Apart from the malware or prohibited practices, Google rarely suspends accounts out of the blue. So, if you see ads getting disapproved, you need to take proactive steps to fix them. There is usually a trail of breadcrumbs to follow. While we are not suggesting that you have been careless, it's just easy to miss those things during a hectic work day. What to do if your review request is rejected? Alright, the truth of the matter is that your review request may still be rejected. We have provided all the information we have in this video to ensure that your review request is successful. If you have followed these steps and still gotten a rejected request, then there is one last option you have. Contact the Google Ads team, which I'll link below. A word of caution, do not contact them first because you need to rectify the policy violations before the review request. It is always best to follow the process rather than picking the nuclear option right in the beginning. Because if Google Ads team rejects your request, there is no going back from that. Conclusion Google Ad Account Suspended is a frustrating and often terrifying experience, especially since it's probably directly responsible for your company's revenue. Summarizing the salient points from this video, here are the things you need to do to stay ahead. Number one, be very careful when you're creating an ad. Ensure that you are not violating any of Google's policies. Number two, Google modifies its policies, so you need to keep yourself up to date. Visit Google's change logs periodically. Number three, when in doubt, ask. There are many Google ad communities where you can clear your doubts. Number four, to protect your website from malware infection, install a security plugin. Number five, if your ads or sites are disapproved, fix it quickly and avoid making the same mistake again. And that's all for today, guys. Hit that like button if you found this video helpful. As always, leave a comment below if you need help with anything. That's all for today. This is Julian, your friendly neighborhood geek, and I will see you again next week.